This is going to be 90-1, system of two variables, and we're going to solve. So today, you guys are going to be able to solve a system of equations with two variables. We're going to use the substitution method, and we're going to use the elimination method. Now, up till now, we have concerned ourselves with solving different types of equations, and there was only one equation to solve at a time. If we had an equation, we could potentially find the solution to the equation and plug the value back in to confirm its solution. And an example of that would be like 3x plus 2 equals 9. You know, we could find that x is, you know, x would equal some number, and then you take it and you could plug it back in and see is it true, right? Does that value actually equal 9 and be able to confirm it? Now let's kind of take a step back and let's analyze this from a different perspective. If I say 2x plus 4 equals 8, I know that x equals 2, because if I plug 2 back in, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is definitely 8. Now, geometrically speaking, I could look at it like this. I could say that one function is 2x plus 4, and another function, gx, g of x, is 8. And if I look at it this way, that means that if I set my f of x to my g of x, what I'm asking is where do these two functions intersect? At what x value do they actually intersect? Now if you modify the situation even further, hooray, I can say that my function y equals f of x and y equals g of x, and if I say it in that sense, now both the solution to the x and y are of interest. And so in this instance, we have what we know as a system of equations, which is usually written in this form, where we have a series of equations that we consider simultaneously at the same time. This type of bracket implies that we need to find the pairs of the x and values that satisfy both equations. If you had three equations, you need to find the x and y value that satisfies all three equations, which means the x and y value that you plug in makes them all true. Okay, that's important. The x and y value that you plug in makes them all true. So our first definition here, it says a linear equation in two variables is an equation of the form a sub 1x plus a sub 2y equals c, or a sub 1 and a sub 2 and c are real numbers with at least uh, a sub 1 and a sub 2 being non-zero. Now there are other forms, but this is one of the forms that's actually easiest for us to use and if we had the form y equals mx plus b, I should spend time turning it into the above form. Okay, so we should spend some time turning it into that above form. So here's our first one. It says solve the system of equations, check your answer algebraically and graphically. So in this instance, 2x minus y equals 1 and y equals 3. Well, y equals 3, it's telling me what y is. And so I can take that value and I can actually plug it back in into the other equation and find what x is. 2x minus 3 equals 1. Add 3 to both sides. 2x equals 4. And I get x equals 2. So now checking it, 2 times 2 minus 3, does that equal 1? I get 4 minus 3, so 1 equals 1. Yes, that works. And if I plug in 3 for y, there's no x to plug in, so 3 equals 3. That works for the second one. So it's both true, so that is. So my answer is going to be 2, 3. Now notice how I wrote it. I wrote it as a point. Now why? If you look at this graphically, this line right here, this is the 2x minus y equals 1. This is the y equals 3. They intersect at this point here, 2, 3. So the way that we need to represent our answer here is as a point. Yes, it's right having x equals 2. Yes, you're right having y equals 3. But you have to tell me what it is as a solution. And this represents a point, so you need to state it as a point. Now this is the only one that I'm actually going to graph uh, graphically for you guys. But what I want you to actually do is maybe pause, plunch, uh, plug in the values into Desmos after we solve this algebraically, and you can take a look and verify our answers that way. 
So the next example here is to solve the system of equations, check your answer algebraically and graphically. So I have this 3x plus 4y equals negative 2 and this negative 3x minus y equals 5. Now in this instance, uh, I used the substitution method for this one, right? I took this value and I substituted into this y and I got it. Now in this instance here, we're going to use something called elimination because I don't have a variable by itself that I can just say, oh yeah, just plug it into the next and work it out. I don't have that luxury right now. So because I don't have that luxury, the other method that we're going to learn is called elimination. Now it's in the name. We're eliminating a variable. And so if we're going to eliminate the variable, the only thing that we have mathematically that eliminates are opposites. Now let me explain. If I had the number 5, what do I have to add it to to make it disappear? Well, negative 5, because you get 0. It's nothing. It's gone. But if I had 5 and I divided by 5, well, I still get 1. That's not gone. If I had 5 and I took the square root of it, well, that's not gone. And so the only operation that we know in math that causes it to be, to, that causes it to disappear like that are going to be opposites. So what we need to do is we need to mathematically manipulate these equations to where one of these variables are going to be opposites. So we need to examine it and be like, am I going to eliminate the x's? Am I going to eliminate the y's? I just want them to be opposites. Now, a rule that we can do is we can multiply any equation by a number. Now, when we talk about Gaussian elimination a little bit next week, or in the next lesson, you know, I'll talk about those rules a little bit further. But one of the rules that we can use is the fact that we can multiply an equation by any number. Well, in this instance, I don't need to because this 3x and this negative 3x, there are opposites. So because they're opposites, if I add them together, that becomes 0, that becomes 3y, and that equals 3, and so y equals 1. Now that I know y equals 1, I could take it and I could plug it back into one of the equations. I could use the top one, I can use the bottom one, in this instance, I'm going to use the bottom one or the top one. So I get 3 times x plus 4 times y equals negative 2. 3x plus 4 equals negative 2, minus 4 on both sides. 3x equals negative 6, x equals negative 2. Now we have to check it. Let's verify it. Now remember, when we're checking them, we have to plug it into both. So 3 times negative 2 plus 4 times 1 equals negative 2. Well, that gives me negative 6 plus 4. That gives me negative 2. Next one, negative 2 equals negative 2. Boop, that works. So now plugging in it into the other equation, I get negative 3 times negative 2 minus negative positive 1. Does that equal 5? So I get negative 6. So positive 6 minus 1. That's going to be 5 equals 5. Yay! So in this instance, it works. I know that this represents a solution. That solution is going to be negative 2, positive 1. So like I said, you can take that, punch it into, your cal or, uh, into a graphing calculator like Desmos, and take a look. Does my graph actually intersect at negative 2, 1? Now in this example here, I know it looks a little daunting because of the fact that we have all these fractions. Well, we can actually get rid of them. Uh, remember I said that we're allowed to multiply by any value, so like if I multiply this top equation, let's say, by 3, and this one by 9. Well, the 3 will distribute here, cancel out, so I just get x. The 3 will distribute here, so I get minus 12y over 5. And the 3 will distribute here, and I'm going to get equals 21 over 5. On this other one, distribute the 9 through. I'm going to get the 9's will cancel out. And so I just get 2x, distribute the 9. The 9 and the 3 will cancel out, right? That's 9y over 3, so that's just going to be plus 3y. Distribute the 9, and I'm going to get equals 9 halves. Well, I still have values in the denominator, so I can multiply everything by them. So I can multiply everything by 5. I can multiply everything by 2. And so if I do that, distributing everything, this is going to give me 5x minus 12y equals 21. And then down here, multiplying everything, you get 4x plus 6y equals 9. Okay, so now looking at this here, I have this negative 12y and this 6y, okay. I have this 5x and I have this 4x. Now remember we said that we have to eliminate them by finding the opposites. Well, 
the opposites here, oh, maybe if I multiply everything by 2, now that they'll become the opposite. So I still have the 5x minus 12y equals 21. And the denominator, I have the 8x plus 12y equals 18. And so these add together. That's going to give me 13x. That does cancel out. And that's going to give me 39. And so now, solving for x, now it's in a form that works for us. We get x equals 13. So now we got to find our y. So I could take this x equals 13, and I could plug it back in the original. That just looks messy. So why not plug it into one of the nicer ones that we've established? And so if I plug that in, 5 times 13 minus 12y equals 21. Well, this is going to be, what is that, 65. And so minus 65 on both sides. So I get negative 12y equals, what is that going to be? Is that 44 but with a negative so that's going to be negative 44 so now if I divide both sides by negative 12 I can reduce this and so y is going to be uh, what is that I can divide both sides by 4 so that's a negative 11 over 3 a negative negative that makes it positive and so writing it as a point I'm gonna have 13 11 over 3. Next one. Now for this one here, if I were to make these the opposites, it looks like, well, look at that. I can make that into a 6. Maybe those will cancel out. So if I want to make them into 6, I should multiply the top one by negative 3, and I'll just leave the bottom one like 2. So now rewriting my equations, I'm going to get negative 6x plus 12y equals negative 18. On the bottom, I'm going to get 6x minus 12y equals 18. Well, if I add these together, I get 0. If I add these together, I get 0. Uh, if I add these together, I get 0. Everything disappeared. Now this is a true statement still, but everything disappeared. Now when this happens in a system of equations, it means infinite solutions. Now when you graph this, you're going to realize that they're the exact same line, so every single point technically intersects itself because it's the same exact line. Now in this next one, let's say if I wanted to eliminate, uh, let's try to eliminate the y's. So negative 3 and then the top that needs uh, what is that a 2 and so if I do that that's gonna give me 12 X plus 6 Y equals 18 I get negative 12 X minus 6 Y that's gonna give me negative 36 now those cancel out that disappears that disappears I get 0 equals wait what 0 equals negative 18 that's another big fat dot 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 that's weird but this is false. That doesn't make any sense. Well, the reason why it makes no sense is because they don't intersect. If you actually graph those two lines, they're going to be perfectly parallel. And because they're perfectly parallel, no solution. There's no intersection of the two graphs. The last one. Now, sometimes what's going to end up happening is we're going to have a system of three equations. Now remember, we said that the solution has to satisfy all three equations, meaning if I find a value for x and y, it has to be true for all three of them. Now let's just look at the first one. What if I just look at the first two, right? We only said we can eliminate two at a time. Now if I eliminate this here, I get 2x equals 2, so x equals 1. Now if I plug that back in, 1 minus y equals 0. That's going to give me negative y equals negative 1, y equals 1. So I have the point 1, 1, which is good. But now let's try to plug it in into the third one. Because it seems like it'll work here, right? If I do 1 minus 1, that equals 0. That's good. 1 plus 1, that equals 2. That's good. But what happens if I plug in 1, 1 into the third one? I get negative 2 plus 1 equals negative 2. I get negative 1 equals negative 2. That's false. 
So there actually is no solution here. Now when you actually graph it, what's going to happen is the lines are going to intersect like this. The only way that those three lines are actually going to be a solution is if they all intersect at the same point. So all three lines somehow, they don't have to be perpendicular like how I drew them, but all three lines have to intersect at the same point for it to be true or for there to be an actual solution that works. So in conclusion, uh, you guys can go ahead and comment on some one of the concepts that were discussed today. I know we took a look at system of equations, so that could be a partial hint there. Now I want to hear from you, what are some of the differences between the elimination method and the substitution method? And then what is the solution of a system of four equations? So I want you to think about what that could mean graphically. Now as usual, this does conclude our lesson. If you do have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.